discover techniques for elevating everyday scraps into journaling gems. Stay tuned to see how it's done and let's create something fun together. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So these are the four pieces I chose to play with today. This is from a present I received. I really like the shape of this. Not sure if I'm going to actually use this. We'll see. This is going to be the main piece. So this is obviously a paper bag. This is from Egypt and it's usually used for putting nuts or seeds into. And these are just packaging papers. So I want to make a loaded pocket out of this and I will completely be covering the front side but not the back side because I still want to see what the origin of this paper bag was like. Although I might add some decorations on the back. So we already have a pocket up here and we already have a pocket here. But I want to add two more pockets using this packaging paper. And this one here, maybe you can see, is cut at an angle, which inspires me to make my pockets at an angle. This one is a bit high, so I think I'll cut that one down to about here. And I will leave this shape. And I want it the same width as my pocket, so I'll cut it here. So this piece will go in here and then I would like another pocket. This time I'll turn this around. For this one I want this slant going in the other direction so I'll cut it the same width. So that goes in here like this. And then I also want a piece to cover the rest up here. And that just needs to go far enough to go underneath this first pocket. And of course, I want the same width again as my other pockets. So that will go here like this. And finally, I also want to cover up this piece. And for that, I will just stand this up and then trace the shape and cut my piece a little bit smaller because I want to see the white edge. Okay, once I have all of my pieces cut out, I'm just going to mark B for back on them just in case I turn them around and then I don't know which way they're supposed to go. And then there's many different ways we could decorate these pieces. We could just add some stamping. We could add some stenciling, maybe by first adding some white gesso underneath. We could just add some spray paints. We could add watercolor or acrylic paints. We could use our jelly plate. Many, many fun options. I would like to use some fabric to add a soft texture. And I'm going to use this one here. This one is by Marsha Dursey and it's called Postcards. As always, I will link my source for designer fabrics from Germany below. It's a shop called Quilting For You. My preferred method of gluing down fabric onto paper or cardstock is always by using a brush and using some thinned down textile glue or PVA glue. This is the one I always use. It's by Action. But any PVA glue will do or any glue that you have good experiences with. I would take something that spreads easily. I would not take a glue stick. I'm not sure that would hold up over the years. So I'll cover my whole piece with the glue and then fabric. I 
and make sure there's no wrinkles. This is obviously a very light fabric, so we still see the tan paper underneath, which gives it a warmer tone. I'm totally fine with that. But if you're using a light fabric like this and you don't want that, then either obviously take some white packaging or go over it with white paint or gesso before you glue it on. So I will glue all of the pieces on. So next we can cut all of our pieces out. I'll just cut them slightly bigger than my packaging piece, just to make sure that the packaging does not peek through. So let's assemble our pocket and see what that would look like. So this is what we would have. And seeing this now, I know that I want definition happening here. So I will do some experimenting. Let's add some water. And then add some Distress Spray Stain Tea Dye, which I think is going to be fairly dark. Actually, let's not spray it. Let's use the nozzle. And just go around the edges. And because we added the water first, it's going to spread a little bit. Obviously, it's never going to spread as much on fabric as it will on paper. That looks very interesting. <laughs> Let me try this. So this is what we have when it's dry and I actually like the effect but I want the edges defined even more so I will also go around it with my walnut stain distress oxide and my sponge. If you don't have any of the sprays but you have some ink pads you can have a similar effect by spritzing it first with water like I did and then just adding your ink on the edges like I'm doing now and then spritzing it again and it will move. It probably won't move as much as it has here, but it will probably give you a very nice effect as well. Or with the re-inkers, that would work too. So instead of going around the edges with the nozzle, you would go around with the re-inker on your edges and then spray again. So I'm really happy with this. And I will do the same for all of my parts. And then for these bigger parts, I'm only spraying the edges. Don't need to soak the whole thing, but I'm spraying a lot because I really want my ink to move. And the nice thing is you can, of course, regulate how much or how even you want your edges to be. Actually, I don't even need to put it on the bottom edges because we won't see those. And please don't knock your bottle over like I almost did. That would be a catastrophe. I'm not even going to worry about the bottom edge here. So my pieces have all dried and I'm switching to ground espresso because I think the walnut stain is not visible enough on the edges. It's too similar to the tea dye on this fabric. Yeah, this one will make the edges darker. So I'll go around this one again. So then we can adhere our pieces. The bottom one, I can of course just adhere the whole piece. And then I'll start with this top piece here, which I can also adhere completely. I'm 
and then I'll do the bottom pocket. This one, of course, I'm only adhering on the three edges. And lastly, I can adhere. Oh, this one. <laughs> I should have maybe adhered this one first because obviously this needs to go under this one. Good thinking, Barbara. So I'll adhere this one on the three sides. Actually, you wouldn't even need to add the glue on this side because this pocket could, could go through to the bottom. That would actually be even better. I also want to sew around these two edges, especially because you see these postcards are sewn as well. So I think that would work really well. But who am I kidding? <laughs> I would sew around the pocket no matter what design this had. Obviously, if you're not going to sew around, make sure that you are working with a glue that will hold well. So I've just sewn along both edges twice and it looks like it's exactly the same as on the fabric, which I think is really, really neat. So we have one pocket, two pockets, three pockets and four pockets. I don't see the necessity to actually sew this one down. You could sew maybe right down here, but I think this is a nice tuck spot as it is. And now I still have this here. I really like the shape of this and I actually also like what it says. I love the I'm eco-friendly, but I even love more that it says hashtag feel your eco and these two cute hearts, which is just perfect for our pocket made out of junk, isn't it? So I think also the size is perfect for here. So I am simply going to ink up the edges with walnut stain. Because why alter a thing that's already cute as it is? Since we have a hole here, why don't we add a brad? I think one of these larger ones would fit. Yeah, that's good. I will just have to cut down one of the legs. Let's clamp that down for a while. And I also want to add a little bit of gold. So I'll use my tarnished brass distress spray stain just because it's easy. You could obviously also just take a brush and use either acrylic paint or watercolor. I'm just going to go along the edges, not everywhere. Would have definitely been easier before I glued them down, but what's the fun in that? And let's try not to knock this bottle over. Okay, it's been a few minutes, we can take this off. We can hardly see the gold, only if we look closely. The other option would be to add embossing powder, which would probably be a little more visible. And you could of course also decorate your edges, for example, with some lace trim. That would look cute, but I don't want to cover the grunge that I have going on, so I will not do that. So now we need to figure out what to do with the back side. So I plan on hinging this onto my page so that I can still see the back side. So I'll need to add a hinge on this side and I can use the same fabric. I have a piece here which is actually perfect, which has the stitching here so that it will look like it's stitched on even though I'm just gluing it on. So I'll just tear a strip. will go here. So I'll brush some glue over this edge. I 
add some more where necessary. And cut off this piece here. And then I want to add some more interest here and maybe also here on the bottom and here. So I'm going to choose one of my handmade stamps. I have quite a collection by now. One option might be this one here. This one is made from one of these print blocks, which you can use to carve your own stamps. Really fun to use and quite easy to carve. You could find these on Amazon or other online platforms. You could probably find various options if you search for stamp carving block. So I think this would be a cute option. Maybe these diamonds. So this one is made by gluing some foam that I just cut with a craft knife into diamond shapes and, and just gluing those onto some stiff cardboard. This is a very fun design. Could just do little dots. This is again just packaging. These little circles are just the insides of holes that I have punched with my hole punch. Another one that might work well is maybe something like this. These are shower curtain rings that I glued onto my cardboard using my glue gun. Or if you want something more irregular, you could do something like this, which is the glue gun directly onto cardboard. You could also just use something like corrugated cardboard directly. Uh, this is one of my favorites. These are just irregular cut rectangles cut out of foam and glued onto a sturdy cardstock. This would also be fun, just a wonky circle cut out of foam. What do we want? Do we want circles? Do we want rectangles? You know what? I'm gonna stick with this simple rectangle design. I also found these. You can get these printing blocks in circles as well. I'm sure there's different shapes too. So it's called easy to carve printing stamps. This one is by Master Cut. You would then just need to mount it onto something. I'm going to take some red acrylic paint and apply that with a brush. Alternatively, you could use a brayer. And I'm choosing red because the border here is red. Let's have some fun stamping. I want to also go over some of the fabric. And I love how irregular it is. So this is dry and I think this is a very fun backside now. So now I can add my glue onto the other half of my fabric strip. And I'm going to glue this into my current planner. If you have watched my last video with my plan with me February, this will already have been decorated. This is a page of my February kit called Steampunk Menagerie. And this is where my pocket is going to go. So I'm just centering that. I'll leave links to this kit down below in case you're interested in looking at that more closely. But now, of course, we can fill this pocket. I'm looking for things I have around me. So I have this piece, which has some writing on the back from my dear friend Maureen. So that could go in here on the top. Then I have a ticket from the movies, the movie Poor Things, which I actually enjoyed a lot. And then, of course, we could add things like tags. These are from the January kit, which was called Whisper of Wings. Something like that. <laughs> so have fun with this. Love you guys. Mwah! Mwah!